Hey, it's Brian Burns, and welcome to this episode of the B2B Revenue Leadership Podcast. Hey, what's more important than our website? Our website has to work. Today, more than ever, <laughs> it's all about being online and having our website scale to our business. That's one of the topics we're going to talk about today, as well as how do you engage with clients? And this is a great example where you're Maybe say you're remote, you're not next to them, you're, you're, you can't go on-prem, but you, you, you still need to do the work, you need to collaborate, you need to be able to communicate and build a level of trust with your client. And how do you do that? We've got a great guest today, uh, somebody who's got a tremendous amount of experience with it. And also, I, I got to tell you, I've had hundreds of guests on the show and almost about 1% really appreciate being on the show enough to understand that, hey, maybe I should like uh, help promote the show. And I really appreciate that, both from a listener standpoint and a guest standpoint, because it's the only way to get the word out, really, because people want to hear what other people like to hear about. And to th this show is all about building our business and being able to connect with people. And that's getting harder and harder to do today. So please check out all the show notes and also ev everything over at b2brevenue.com. I'm still giving away the free ebook on how large companies make product selections. It's all free. It used to be, a, I mean, it was, it's a full book. It was on Amazon. I took it down. I, made, I turned it into an ebook as a way of get, connecting with the audience. Uh, I don't spam. I may send out just one update a month. You can unsubscribe if you wish, of course. Uh, but just to keep you, you know, in the fold, let you know what's going on. I'm still going to be posting most of my stuff on LinkedIn. So connect with me there, Brian G. Burns on LinkedIn. Let's get into the interview. I'll sum it up at the end. And I think that you're really going to enjoy this and understand, you know, what it takes to be an entrepreneur today and how to connect with your customer and make them happy. Hey, Mario, thanks for joining us today. As a way of getting started, tell us about yourself. Hey, Brian. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, so my name is Mario Peshev. I'm the CEO of Devrix. We are a distributed WordPress development agency profiling in high-scale solutions for small and medium enterprises and fast-paced startups. We do provide uh, technical partnerships and business consulting for a bunch of different brands around the world, including Audi, the automotive company, uh, high-scale magazines, some edu companies, and a lot more. Wow. How did you get interested in this? Uh, so my background is in software engineering and, uh, you know, I've been in tech for a while, uh, at some point of time in about 12 years ago, I started freelancing and when I turned to a full-time freelancer and, uh, as the business kind of started, uh, you know, growing in terms of, um, the sales pipeline, uh, I needed more people to kind of back me up and help out on different initiatives and the ability to take on larger projects as well. So that's how we've kind of formed the Devrix. Oh, so are you are a co-founder of it? Is that true? Or uh, so it's an interesting story. So I'm the <laughs> I'm the sole founder of the company, but uh, while I was still a full-time freelancer, I had a kind of an assistant, a junior guy who started with me, and like he's currently the CTO of the company. But uh, like even if I founded it, he's been with the company before it was cool, as hipsters would say. Yeah, <laughs> and that's a really competitive space, isn't it? Mm, yeah, most definitely. It's uh, it's really tricky to to get the word out and uh, essentially land any business, especially with the you know well known uh, race to the bottom and all the side builders out there. It's definitely a challenge. And and how do you differentiate yourself? So uh, we've uh, we've been profiling in providing high scale enterprise services in WordPress. So. WordPress uh, is a content management system that's been around since 2003, but it started as a blogging platform. And most people still relate WordPress to just, you know, a blogging engine, something like, you know, WordPress.com or Blogspot or any other, or Medium, if you want. 
Uh, and also most people in the community, most people in the industry are designers or bloggers who turn into super users selling services. Uh, most of the work that happens in the WordPress community is essentially installing sites and themes and plugins, and that's pretty much it. Maybe a little bit of customization on the front end, but th that's pretty much what it what it's all about. Uh, on the other end, you do have uh, companies building uh, .NET applications in Java or, say, Ruby on Rails and Django, some more kind of mature enterprise technologies. Uh, and there's uh, there was kind of a niche in between for WordPress solutions that required professional development help. And that's the target market we've, uh, we've been aiming for since day one. And that's what kind of differentiates us from uh, pretty much everyone else out there. Like, again, most people do provide small and business uh, uh, solutions, you know, starter blogs, five page business websites and things like that. Or they use different solutions like uh, enterprise web content management platforms or custom built in Java and .NET for complex applications. While we do try to ban WordPress uh, for applications that may handle tens of millions of views a month or uh, integrate with complex ERPs and CRMs and everything in between. So it sounds like a lot of management. It's a lot of moving pieces. Um... You know, I started my career as a software developer, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was really a picking a language. Today, you don't have that choice. It's like you, you kind of um, pick a stack, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. How, how do you manage all of that? So uh, the kind of the on the bright side, we've kind of focused on WordPress as the leading engine, uh, which kind of helps us build a small but very effective team for building complex applications. So at first we've tried to be full stack and building all sorts of solutions for pretty much everything. With WordPress it's a little bit easier because you kind of have to study in depth a one a specific platform. Uh, WordPress currently powers 30% of the top 10 million websites. And like statistically speaking, every third customer is one who is already running a WordPress-based website. Uh, so in terms of market share, it made sense for us. In terms of focus, it meant that we can spend a lot of time on focus, discovery, exploration, research, and development for that particular technology. And over time, we've tried to build credibility by uh, submitting kind of basically uh, sending patches to the WordPress core system that currently runs tens of millions of websites. Uh, so the, the main kind of challenge here is just making sure that WordPress is the right tool for the job, which it is most of the time, even though, of course, there are particular cases where, you know, it's simply not the best solution for the market. And where are those cases? Because I'm seeing a lot of things, you know, you know, there's products like Wix that are coming out, Squarespace, mm -hmm. and I assume they're more towards the lower solopreneur uh, type market space. And then at the enterprise level, is it more the marketing automation products that are are, are taking that space or? Mm, yeah, that's a great question. So, uh, yeah, Wix, Squarespace, Weebly, all of those are site builders for, uh, you know, solopreneurs and small businesses and kind of small marketing agencies. Basically, they let you create simple websites, but when it comes to improving the flexibility and uh, everything else that's required for running an online business, yeah. they fall pretty short. And they don't really, they're a great way to start if you're, again, a solopreneur or a small company of two, two and three people. If uh, digital isn't really running your business yet and you simply need to be online in order to kind of have something printed on your business card, then it's fine. But once you start building something more mature and actually start integrating, for example, marketing automation software, as you mentioned, or CRMs or ERPs or any other um, type of business software related to your own application, you need some uh, mature development platform, a framework, a stack, a CMS that is able to connect those and create kind of a graph of your web management system and everything that surrounds that uh, kind of environment. Uh, on the other end, yeah, you do have kind of enterprise solutions that provide a lot more but they do require hundreds of people working on that for many 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 years and it's just an 
incredibly expensive endeavor that's worth uh, usually eight figures, sometimes even nine figures. So we're trying to be somewhere in between, so to speak. Uh, as for uh, what is WordPress not suitable for, WordPress is still a kind of a content management system, and it does provide a specific database structure for uh, inserting information in WordPress. Like uh, when you set up a new WordPress installation, you do have posts, you do have pages and categories, right? And you do have users. Uh, and all the posts and pages, they do have a title, a content field, publish date, author, things like that. And if your application requires the type of data that's suitable for that specific database schema, then you're good to go. And it, this is the case most of the time. Like if you have products for an e-commerce, if you do have... Uh, like a specific store, like selling doors and you don't want to list them or air conditioners or anything, like all of those are going to have a title, you know, name of the product, description, you know, publish date, since you're kind of publishing, like some products are going to be outdated at some point of time, author who has altered that and so on. But if you, for example, want to create Instagram, uh, you don't necessarily require that or it's too much overhead because you end up having an image and a description, and then you have a lot more to that. Yeah. You don't necessarily have a, you know, a title for that. You don't necessarily have, you know, some specific meta things or revisions because Instagram wants you to post something, then it's live, uh, and so on. Same goes for uh, Netflix, right? For Netflix, again, you do like your core engine needs to be it needs to deal with streaming. Uh, you don't need to deal with comments, for example, or a lot of other things that WordPress incorporates uh, in its core system. Now, I'm sure you, you at the beginning you got a lot of business through reputation, certainly through supply and demand. You know, anybody who's super good at any technology is always going to be busy, and, and that works great when it's like you and your partner. Um, mm -hmm. how, how do you build that though? What was that? What was that journey like? So, yeah, for starters, there were some leads that were able to kind of feed the two of us, which was kind of okay. But once we started hiring more people and working with, uh, you know, outsourced agencies for specific activities, then it became pretty hard because uh, being able to sustain 40 people, for example, <laughs> because at some point of time we were 40 and, and like losing a contract, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. Uh, so the, the two things that we've done... Uh, that really made an impact. The, the first one was switching to recurring revenue. Uh, we do like over 90% of our business right now is uh, WordPress development retainers. Uh, so we package, you know, a certain number of hours on a monthly basis for all of our customers. And we do allocate all that work across different team members dealing with development, with uh, server management and integrations, with creative, even with marketing and business growth. Like last night I had a call with a client who's uh, uh, kind of postponing certain assignments and they said that they couldn't find advertisers for one of their products. So right now we are building a, a, the roadmap for April and we are going to pitch 20 people in our CRM who may be potential good fits for them in order to kind of have the opportunity to potentially close two advertisers and with that kind of bring additional revenue for ongoing development for that particular project. So again, we try to be a, a pretty viable partner who really cares about the monetization opportunities that a business has and how to expand those and increase them and grow and nurture the business in a way that increases the lifetime value of the customer as well. So that's kind of the the the, the most important thing about the um, the retainers and the recurring revenue, and the second one is actually incorporating that specific business model element. So we do have people who deal with business development and with marketing. We have uh, signed a partnership with HubSpot as an agency partner, and we work very closely with our customers on pinpointing specific problems they have in their marketing campaigns and certain opportunities that may be lucrative for them uh, from a financial standpoint. And again, this way we simply try to increase the lifetime value for every customer, make them happy, receive great testimonials, referrals, everything along those way, and make sure that they're paying us on a, on a monthly basis. Yeah, and I see that as a very successful model. One, the recurring revenue thing I think is brilliant on the services side. You know, lawyers and accountants have been doing it forever. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, well, why not technology people instead of this constant, uh, give me a bid for this. Oh, that's that number of hours and it took, you know, twice as long and you get 
<laughs> short shafted or they get overcharged one or the other and and it uh, enables you to build a relationship the other part being able to partner with a vendor who doesn't have um certainly enough services people like you know amazon web services or in your case hubspot is also a brilliant strategy because i'm sure they bring you business or referral you into accounts is that true mm, yeah they do they do have a you know sales channel for integrating hubspot for specific markets and this is also working pretty well but more importantly they do have a very comprehensive framework for inbound marketing packages and that's been the sole reason we've uh, signed up with them like they do pretty much give you the entire blueprint for this and you can follow it uh, to the T or you can ex extend it and refactor it and take something out and put something else in and so on so it, it pretty much gives you the the working process for over 3,000 uh, HubSpot agency partners uh, average rates, types of services they offer, average time it takes for specific things, and the best practices how to implement a particular whatever it is. And also a list of uh, third-party vendors for specific services that you may want to provide uh, to your clients, but you may not have the expertise to offer that in-house. And how long was it before you hired your first uh, salesperson, business development person, or, or have you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we do. So we do have a slightly different model right now. Like uh, we do have business developers who are in charge of the, uh, you know, I, I know that you love the CRO position and that's something that we actually try to incorporate in house. Uh, we try to keep a pretty tiny separation between marketing and sales uh, in a nutshell. And we do try to do business development as a combination, as a great mix between marketing and sales itself. So we've tried hiring, we've tried hiring uh, salespeople, but the standard process of selling uh, kind of uh, outsourced development services is pretty long and tedious, yeah. and the revenues aren't really that excellent. So unless you have someone who's really hitting every single conference and uh, ready to close deals for 9 to 12 months. That's the usual sales cycle for most. Uh, it doesn't really add up for the most part. So we do have business professionals who have a uh, background in either sales or marketing. Uh, and we try to compensate by uh, mixing them with people who have the opposite specialty or expertise in order to bring the best of both worlds. And this way, again, they work uh, kind of side by side on both uh, marketing and sales. And most of the most of our pipeline actually comes from uh, incoming leads. Oh, it does. That's great. And yep. uh, how about as far as like your technical people? Have any of those folks been able to transition into the business development side, the customer development and, uh, you know, uh, kind of practice owner role? Uh, so we do have a, a concept that we call a uh, project owner in-house. Uh, it's pretty much a developer who has consistently hit goals and, uh, you know, been very successful working with an ongoing client. So we do promote them to a tech lead and onward we do turn them into a project owner. So our project management isn't – so like most – companies that we've been working with other deaf agencies they do have kind of a technical person and a project manager always attending every call always kind of joining every email conversation and so forth so we we try to upgrade our great top talent that showcases some sort of soft skills and make them a project owner of a certain uh, ongoing retainer that they work on so this way we kind of uh, again build the the right balance between the technical skills they need and the standard uh, kind of, again, mixture between project management and customer support in order to work closely with the customer, uh, come up with ideas, respond, you know, politely, uh, make sure they clear out any sort of ambiguity there is for a certain assignment and so on and so on. And this is, again, something interesting. It doesn't really work every single time, but, uh, you know, with the right process that we have in, in place, you can really upgrade a developer to a tech lead to someone who's not only in charge of the technical implementation, but also considering the long-term implications of a feature for a project and for a business, uh, discussing the long-term roadmap, and also planning the technical implementation along that long-term plan. Now, it sounds like you guys have focused on a particular problem segment. 
Have you been able to, you know, kind of leverage that into case studies and make that a particular market segment for you? Is it a vertical? Is it a horizontal? Um, <laughs> what is working for you? Yeah, that's uh, that's another great question. We've been trying to kind of niche down even further and kind of focus on a specific subset of niches. So that doesn't really work for us. So uh, the first thing we're trying to handle is like our buyer personas, essentially, they are uh, businesses, uh, like 90% of them are in the States, who run WordPress for a high-scale project, where high-scale may be... Uh, 250,000 views a month to 20, 30, 50 million uh, views a month. They usually have, uh, they receive uh, at least 70% of their kind of revenue through their digital platform. It's something complex that's really feature rich. They have started themselves or with a freelancer or a small agency. They've hit some certain limits in terms of performance, stability, scalability, even security. And they really need someone who can take care of that entire stack in order for them to focus on the business and take their own business on the next level. Yeah. And how do they find out about you? Uh, again, inbound marketing has been one of the main things that uh, works for us. Yeah. Uh, I do try to be fairly active at specific industry events, but most of those events aren't really visited by uh, leads. So it's more about creating the videos of those or transcripts or anything else that's reusable and evergreen material. The rest has been our company blog and my own blog that I maintain, uh, which uh, have been a great source of leads when we attract specific long tail keywords. Moreover, we do tackle different channels. Uh, the, the two channels that work for us are LinkedIn and Quora, and the third one is Twitter. Uh, by, again, being active there, uh, engaging, uh, creating conversations with specific leads, creating strategic partnerships, uh, spinning up uh, viral posts and so on, that's really uh, helping us gain some visibility and popularity among the industry. And uh, this way, it, it kind of helps us uh, identify specific topics or specific types of problems that people naturally look for when they're in trouble, such as problems related to scalability or um, uh, improving the stability of a website or uh, you know, solving specific enterprise problems for customers uh, that need to use WordPress and so on and so on. And what what's the obstacle? Is the, the geography an issue? Is it... Um company size? Is it just the geographic distance? What gets in the way? Mostly it's the vast number of service providers who yeah. don't really have technical skills <laughs> and really do charge, you know, $10 per hour or something like that. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much like most conversations end up with like, you know, the standard, you know, my nephew can do that for 20 bucks or, or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and the, the thing is with, uh, with web development and, and essentially building a, a, an actual digital business, the main caveat is being able to explain how bundled, we call them Lego solutions, you know, stuff that you pretty much put on top of each other, how they impact the long-term stability and performance and security of a website. Uh, our company has, uh, we call them the three core pillars of Devrix, and they are stability, security, and speed. And everything, like everyone can set up a WordPress website, install a few plugins, we've already discussed that. Every agency or a freelancer can set this up for 200 to 500 bucks and, and so on. But once you hit a pretty insignificant milestone, like 10,000 visitors a month or 50,000 visitors a month, you understand that this is not a stable, a stable solution that would let you kind of grow further. Uh, your website you know, suddenly loads for 15 seconds, Certain sections disappear, uh, and odd and obscure error messages start showing up on your website out of nowhere. You update WordPress and suddenly half of your website is down, things like that. And that happens like pretty much all the time. And uh, some of our customers are, uh, you know, IPO'd and they do have a pretty, pretty solid, you know, they do have pretty solid legal contracts with their franchisees or their partners. And every minute of downtime costs them uh, a ton of money. So yeah. they simply cannot afford to really make any uh, radical mistake of that sort 
only to save uh, a couple thousand bucks a month. Yeah, I, I can certainly see that. And how much of your company is services versus um, what I would call consulting wear, meaning um, software that you've developed over the years to mm -hmm. provide those three pillars of capabilities? Yeah, so we do have about 10% of our uh, kind of revenue comes from products that we create internally, but none of them is extremely significant or something that's super powerful that we're investing a, a ton of money in. Uh, but there are still helper tools and solutions and libraries and, and things that you can add on top of a, a kind of WordPress product in order to make it more powerful or more usable or anything along those lines. Uh, but we do invest uh, a good portion of our time building uh, in-house tools that really help us deliver the right value to our uh, clientele. For example, we do have a custom stability framework that we've built, and it tracks a number of things for every single website. Like, for example, it tracks whenever a customer has uploaded an increasingly large image that's slowing down the website, or if they if their Google Analytics code suddenly disappeared because they deleted it themselves, or if they mark their website as no index by installing a random plugin. A lot of different rules are being applied to every single website. Some of those are general when we do run that across our portfolio of clients, and some of them are very specific for a, a specific client. Uh, so we do try to handle all, all, the, all the three phases of stability. The first one is uh, a problem prevention, the second one is problem protection, and the third one is essentially mitigation, if still something happens along the way. Like it's a common thing to, for example, if you integrate a common problem from a website, they do have an Instagram feed on the homepage, but Instagram do require a token that you kind of authenticate when you log into your account. But this token expires every, let's say, two months or so. And if this token expires, you kind of have to log in and re-authenticate it again. Uh, but that means that your section is no longer available or it even yelled some sort of error message. So we do have, with our framework, we monitor for that sort of expirations and we either re-authenticate it if possible because we still have to on the user account to some extent, or at least kind of call the client and say, hey, the Instagram token has expired, please just log in and sign in and you're good to go for the next two months. Like third-party service integrations are the main blocker here, or CDNs, web application firewalls, a lot of other services that may have an outage or anything else that happens. Like it, it pretty much happens all the time. You know, even Amazon is down pretty pretty frequently. Uh, GitHub, the largest version control system, has had uh, the largest distributed uh, denial of service attack in the world uh, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, and it, it, it gets pretty tricky. Like, if you don't know what to look for, if you don't know how to monitor for that, it's a problem. Uh, this same framework, it also integrates uh, security scanning services. So we look for possible vulnerabilities in web server versions, in certain plugins or themes or the WordPress core. Uh, all of those are reported in our internal Slack channel. And this way we can take actions before the client even knows about that, before hackers can figure out that there is a problem and just send a report to the client. Hey, there was a problem. We took care of it in, you know, within four hours. You're good to go now. Excellent. Hey, this has been a lot of fun, Mario. Where do people go to learn more about you, your company, and what you're doing? Yep, absolutely. Uh, everyone can find the company at devrix.com, D-V-R-I-X.com. Uh, I'm around on, uh, my, my own blog is devwp, like developerwordpress.eu. And uh, people can find me, just look up Mario Peshev on Twitter, LinkedIn, or Quora, and I'd be happy to connect and answer any follow-up questions if needed. Hey, so if you're looking for somebody who can really help scale your website, uh, he's the man. Uh, he really understands the issues and the differentiators between just putting something up. Believe me, I've, I've done it. Uh, I, I tried um, yeah, using Wix for my website. It looks pretty, and it was pretty simple, but I understand, you know, for it to scale, uh, you really need somebody who knows what they're doing, and uh, he's the man for you. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you also understand what we're getting at here is the ability to really connect with your clients, understand what they need, uh, over-deliver, under-promise, and really help them out and share and, and really treat people like people. 
Well, what's happened, I think, with the internet is that we've that the more distance that we have in community, it, it, we turned into the swipe uh, society where we can just swipe people left or right, and as opposed to treating them like part of our tribe. And I think that's the difference here. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please check out some of the blogs from our partners. Uh, Prezi, if you're looking for a presentation, doing QBRs this time of year, looking to really, you know, polish up your story and see what is scientifically working with your clients as well as trace it. Prezi.com. Their business product is amazing. You got to check that out. Also, get your sales team doing video emails. They are by, by far more effective. I'm showing one or two a week now on my LinkedIn page. It's blowing up. People love video. This is the year of video. And that, that's what we have to do. That's how we have to communicate. Uh, text is not enough. Everyone's saying the same things and no one's believing any of it because it's it's just text. That's it. I appreciate everybody listening. Uh, please connect up with all of us. I'm Brian G. Burns on LinkedIn.com. Please share the podcast with one person this week. Really appreciate it. Get the ebook at B2B revenue.com. Just sign up in the little email box. It'll, I then send you a, a response with a little envelope. And at the bottom of that envelope on the right hand corner is a click, a link to download the ebook. So the ebook itself is not mailed to you. You just, the link to it is mailed to you. Thanks for listening.